Let's see, there's bush crafters. They're the whittlers and the the axe dudes, and I guess they kind of can go sit there on the fence. You can kind of be a bush crafter slash survivalist or preparedness junkie. I want to go fishing Cause it takes my stress away I want to go fishing Try and cast my blues away I want to go fishing I don't want to watch the clock I want to go fishing I don't ever want to stop Well, hello, YouTube. Captain Dave, back in the wolf den, one more time. Yes, we're uh, in the wolf den doing more of a little tabletop thing here that I've, I have to say that I sort of didn't follow up on a, you know, a topic that I was going to do long ago. When I did several videos because I got sort of interested in the EDC, everyday carry, type subject. Not that I'm a prepper. Not that I'm a bush crafter. All these things that are all over YouTube. I mean, all these labels. You label me fisherman. Charter fishing guide. Boot captain. You, that's what you label me. You want to label me? That's what you label me. Besides all the other stuff, I know y'all are labeling me. So, I actually did several videos on different multi-tools and all this stuff. And showed you that all that cheap China multi-tools are mostly garbage. Okay? And... A lot of it is on Amazon. And I said I was going to sort of follow up with my everyday carry. Well, it's been months now. This is my EDC everyday carry from now on. So, this may be a little lengthy, this video, but I just talked about this. So, here is my version of a lot better item for me. But could that clip right there work out any better? If we're getting into Dave's EDC, and that's exactly what this video is going to be. So Dave's EDC, where does it all start? It all starts right here. I showed this in my last video too. So I wear this belt. I love this belt. This thing, believe it or not, I just got it at Academy Sports and Outdoors. And the reason I got it is because it is thick. Look how thick it is. I love this belt because I'm a fisherman. When I wear this, the rod butt goes, and this is how it's connected. I got it at Academy. Okay. And it just goes on like this. This is a very important part of my EDC. Then it's got Velcro here to hold that inside, right? This is a 5.11 tactical series. 5.11, 5.11 tactical series. But my whole EDC everyday carry starts with this, okay? my 511 tactical black belt this goes on here always this goes on here then what would be the second sort of thing that's always on the belt well i despise clinky keys and stuff like that in my pockets and i'm down to being a minimalist on keys. I got house, truck, a lock, a gas cap, but look at this. I got this fake key here and I found this. So I found that. So it's a neat little, just another blade. Uh-oh, I wouldn't make it to the airport, but here's the deal. 
that's where I keep my keys on my belt. And then these just snap in. And when you hear that, you know your keys ain't going nowhere because there's various models of these. There's ones that are like a clip like this that just clip on. I've had those get caught on something, rip off the belt, and my keys fall. If that happens in the water or near the water, I am so SOL. This actually goes on the belt. Okay. So this goes on the belt. So it has to, if I get my keys caught on something, this is called my key pal. And you know where I found this? Ace Hardware, Atlantic Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida. So this is super wide, so it fits all these wider belts. And bam, there you go. So that goes with me every day, everywhere. That goes with that, goes with this. Then what else do I carry every single day? And I mean, like this, I use it a hundred times a day. I pull my keys out, which I, like I said, all this stuff is keeping it out of my pockets. I pull my keys off a hundred times a day, right? What else do I carry? That right there, folks. If you don't have an O-Light, Chris Tanner, on Prepared Minds 101. Check out his channel. He done turned me on to the Olight like no tomorrow. It got into, I've got three Olights. Do I got three? Yeah, I got three Olights now. I'm not one of these flashlight freaks, but I, each one has a little purpose. I got a little keychain one, did a video about that. I got another one that's kind of like a headlamp one, okay? But here's the cool thing about this double type belt clip. Look at that. You got that, then you got that. I'm big into the belt clip thing. I keep a lanyard on it because many times I'm using this over the water or something. And this, I, like I said, I did a video about it. Let me show you. The reason Olight is so bad to the bone, and this is all reiterating what I've already done videos on. Look at that. USB, baby. Magnetic. And that's your charger. And in here is a little red or, and or green light. When Chris Tanner showed this, I went, sign me up. But this here is... The M2R Warrior. Yeah, it's kind of tactically looking, but it's not really. You got a nice button right there. I'm not going to go into all this, but that is a powerful, very, very long-lasting flashlight. I've already had it soaking wet in the water. I had one of my O-lights literally fall into a container under my truck when I was changing out my diesel fuel filter. One of my, and this is magnetic because my other one is magnetic too, one of the other ones I got, which is a small one. I had it like that, it got knocked off and literally was shining down in a container full of diesel fuel. Wiped it off, ready to go. So there you go, that's that. That's the other EDC and here's the cool part. Get out my Dexter Russell hat here and let me show you this. It's a little weighty, but it works in a pinch. Headlamp. I use it all the time. Headlamp with that double belt clip. Use it all the time. A good flashlight goes with me everywhere. Number one, I have to wear these reading glasses. And then when fine print is so fine, I can't see it, I hit it with the flashlight. That's the other thing. Now, we're getting into, I've made a few changes even. I used to carry a, this every day. This is a Gerber. 
I can't remember what it's called. It's a little razor knife. I used to use this as a money clip. But I'm going to tell you why I'm not using it as a money clip anymore. So I used to carry this. Another thing that I seem to carry with me almost all the time is I did an entire video of this. It's on my, uh, might be on my Tackle Junkie uh, playlist. Boaz Line Cutter 2. Right here, I use this for cutting and searing the end of braid. It's got this little, I got a video on this, I'll put it in the links. And it's a little butane. Fill it up right there through that hole. It's a little butane lighter. See? I don't have it up very high because it doesn't take much. Let's hear. Here, let's get out the big old spool of Mason hard type nylon. Stick that in there. Melts it right off. Blunt the end. Boom, there you go. I seem to carry this all the time. Why? Because you can always use a little flame cutting line um, it what it does is it cauterizes the ends of your braid so I carry that that's one thing that goes in my pocket then I sort of switched out this because there's a reason why I switched this out to my old buck I don't like using this blade for just opening up a simple package so I'll have this clipped on the inside of my pocket, and this is my little $20 flip style buck that's seen lots of better days, but it's sharp, and that's all that matters. Buck was so f such a good company, I love Buck, that I said to him, I got this knife and I really like it. It's got a pop topper right there. It's kind of got a rubbery feel. It's been uh, soaked in salt water while I was wade fishing out in the surf in the, one of the last videos. But I broke the belt clip, and then all of a sudden it just went into the drawer. And I asked Buck, hey, can I get a belt clip? They literally sent me the, the screw, the Torx end wrench for this, the two screws and the belt clip came within about two weeks. This, you push this button back, flick it and it's locked now sometimes I just put receipts under there throw it in my pocket so there's this basically my EDC type stuff that I carry every day and like I said it starts with the belt which is also my fish fighting belt because when you have a big hard spot on your hip when you're fighting a big fish it's an easy place, no matter what the butt end of your rod looks like, to put the rod. I always say, real fishermen should wear belts. So that's, there's my stuff. Every day on the belt, this is what I carry. But let me show you something that I got just, what was it, this morning. See, you're going to say to yourself, Hey, Dave, where's your wallet? Don't you carry like a wallet, too? Since you're not a prepper, you're not a bushcrafter, you're not a survivalist, and you're not a tactical dude. <laughs> all these little labels and stuff that are all over YouTube. But let me show you something. This was my wallet. This was my wallet. And what this is is I actually had, you know, one of those $5 Walmart wallets. Okay? A $5 Walmart wallet. And it was one of those tri-fold jobbies, right? And it got to be where it was like that thick and crap. If you ever saw the old Seinfeld episode of George Costanza with his leather wallet that was that thick that he stored hard candy in. He had uh, punch cards from, you know, restaurants to get one free or something. And it was throwing his back off and he kept hard candy in it and everything. I mean, that episode of Seinfeld is absolutely hilarious. Um, 
But that was like me. I used to have this. And man, I'm telling you, when you're working on the boat and I'm sitting on the deck and I'm up under the console, I literally had to take my wallet out of my pocket. I couldn't take it. And it's there was a big trend about getting to be minimalist, right? Men getting rid of that old-fashioned fi- leather filing cabinet that, you know, stuck out their pocket that big. So I got rid of that, and I cut this card holder out of the center of this green trifold nylon wallet. Well, one day, not long ago, I whipped it out, pulled out my debit card or something, and I literally had some young girl at the store say, is that your wallet? And I went, yeah, and I showed it to her, and she's like, that's a real piece of crap. (laughs) And she's right. And then the same week, get this, get this, the same exact week, I was contacted via, because of my YouTube channel, by Popov Leather, Popov Leather, popovleather.com, handmade in British Columbia, Canada. This was beautiful. You want to talk about some, I mean, nice, uh, what would you say, presentation. It came in this bag. I got an email from Pop-Off Leather. So it came in this, Pop-Off Leather. It came in this. And what he did is Ryan Popov sent me, here's his card, sent me, proudly made in British Columbia, Canada, taking care, it's just got some all information about the Popov leather products. And he said, hey Dave, how would you like to, you know, root... Now, he didn't say, go ahead and make a video and review this for me or whatever. And he said, just, you know, review our leather products. And I said, sure. And I open up, you know, I open up the links from the email that he sent. Even got like a pop-off leather decal here. That's nice. Look at that. Okay. So, um... He sent me this email, and it had two links in it. It was a wallet or like a knife, you know, little folding knife sheath with like a pen holder to go in your pocket. And I believe he referred to this as a front pocket uh, wallet. He even sent me a nice, you got this nice letter with it. Thank you about all our products, about pop-off leather. We back all our leather goods with a lifetime satisfaction guarantee. So I thought this was wonderful. Here's even another card, a thanks card, okay, showing different ways the leather will look. I opened this up. I said to him, I actually told Ryan on an email, my God, I'm already getting... I already got a comment about my minimalist wallet here. What a piece of junk it was from some young girl at a store. But here it is. He sent me this just to go over and review. I mean, it is nice quality. Like he said, this is, it's very quality. It's a card holder. I got some cards in here. You know, this is this is perfect. There's driver's license, fishing license. I don't carry a lot of stuff. Nice, minimalist. And then this is what I really liked. Look, I think I already scratched the heck out of it. But this thing will really get cool with age. That's for sure. And this is where I keep actually when I have them which I had them, but then I went to the store and I spent it all. I had $25 and I stuck the paper money right in there. So if you're interested in a really nice quality 
um, minimalist wallet like this, this is probably going to last, golly, I don't know, how long would that last? I mean, this piece of junk, but this is beautiful. I mean, I don't get excited over things like this very often, but because I was using this and I told Ryan, oh my God, yeah, I'm interested in the wallet. There you go. So I'll put the information about Popov Leather in the video descriptions. I can see that all this type of stuff makes for great gifts, okay? You got a, somebody with a birthday or something like that coming up. I know Father's Day, Mother's Day, all that's gone. Christmas is coming up here in not too long. So there you go. That's, an, that's something you could always think of. So there's just some of the EDC. I know this isn't stereotypically my usual type of video, but I just wanted to go over since this has now completed my everyday carry. This pop-off leather, what they call basically, I think he called it a front pocket wallet or five front pocket five card holder or something. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna use this for any cash. I never have cash and if I do, it's not much. Yeah, so this isn't my stereotypical video, but it gives you a little insight into, I don't know, me, a fisherman, not a prepper, not a bushcrafter, not a survivalist, but on any day of the week. And this is now going in the cylinder file. So this is everything and I'll tell you, you know, I talked to a guy, I can't remember his name now. I think it started with a J. I'm terrible, terrible, terrible with names, but I'm fantastic with faces. I'm walking through Walmart. He saw the video about this Mora Eldris. Guess what? He walked by, turned around, Captain Dave? I said, yeah. Man, I recognize you from that knife on your side. There you go. <laughs> it's a small world, folks. Any one of these, any one of these items will do you good, that's for sure. Thanks for watching, folks. And uh, don't forget, watch the videos up in here. And when you, if you subscribe, and I don't know because I don't understand why you can have 6,500, 6,500 subscribers, but then a video... When it comes out, it'll get maybe two, three hundred, you know, views. That's fine and dandy. But not everybody clicks the little bell because you know what? On your phone, you probably don't even know where it's at. That's the problem. Computer people, we see the bell. The bell, when you click it under the video, is to receive email notifications. Oh, since this is a little vloggy-ish, um, I wanted to make an announcement because like I, I think I was skipped right over it on my fishing reports when you click on my website which is in the video description it's in the video description maybe I'll even put it right here right here when you go to captaindaves.com there's fishing reports you're missing half of everything because of the fact that I only do videos when I have a topic I feel like talking about the meat and potatoes is on my fishing reports. That's where I do more commentary. I put up other stuff. I put up photographs of charter customers, blah, blah, blah. I do a little blogging, just putting, talking about stuff on there. Conjunction with my Amazon page, my fishing reports page, and the YouTube channel. So that's all, that's all in one kind of that's how I look at it my fishing reports my Amazon um, tools of the trade page which is all these things that I recommend that I have done reviews and stuff on on my blog before I forget I mentioned I really can't do fishing videos anymore I've had twice where I've said 
no fishing videos anymore. And it's the reason being is the minute I do a fishing video and we're highly successful, I go there the next time or even drive by the spot because there is no fishing spots in Jacksonville. Not really. I mean, where do you got to go? Way down past the dang Buckman Bridge or something to be, you know, have a secret spot that nobody is going to recognize. All my spots when I'm videoing yeah, are very recognizable. I understand that. But I go by, it's either the wrong time of day, wrong tide, wrong week, wrong everything. And it'll be somebody that I know sitting there that they've watched the video. And then I even have people that go to that spot after seeing the video and have emailed me or texted me. So there's no more fishing videos anymore. There's going to be how-tos. There's going to be afterwards or beforehand on the dock on the boat, at the boat ramp, a review of the day or a, a discussion about the day before or after a charter. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. We're sitting there and then I go to a spot and there's somebody sitting there. And I do not want to fish near other people 99% of the time. I... If I see boats on a spot that I know I can go to, I'm not going there. I'm veering off and going to somewhere else. And if you're sitting on a spot, let's say that was in the video the day before that you saw and you went, hey, that's a Billy Bob Hobnob point. And you go there. I've already seen you. I've already seen it because I have two different sizes of binoculars I keep on my boat and I scan constantly unless it's at the jetties or something I mean anybody can go to the jetties and do anything I mean yeah maybe not all the rocks look the same up in the river and things like that I have to put my foot down and I'm sorry I really can't do videos on the boat at a certain a point or a rock pile or anything like that because the background and everything will be shown. I literally have had charters where I've taken somebody to a spot. Now that's a charter even. They paid their dues and they feel like they can go and I go there two days later and there's a guy sitting on the spot that I just took in my boat. I just took him there. Now, granted, he might be all wrong. 90% of the time, nobody mimics the exact same thing I'm doing. And then I've done videos where we're killing them on a certain spot, and I go there, and what do I see? Before I even get there, I pull up on binoculars, and I recognize three boats of people I know who have saw the videos. It's funny how they don't do that in Louisiana, and you know why they don't do that? I literally watch videos of a guy. He'll tell you where to be there. He'll tell you where to go, how to fish it, what species, what size, time of year, everything. You should know why? They got 10 times the inshore fish that we do. They got 10 times the redfish, 10 times the sheep's head, 10 times the trout, and better limits. So what happens? They don't care. They call in everybody because there's enough for everyone but not here. It's kind of like one time I'm sitting on it, Mother's Day. I put a jug on a near shore reef and I'm just checking my drift. Here's my jug and I'm pulling the boat up and we're drifting off of it. And here comes a boat from somebody that I know drives right up to my jug goes, hi Dave. I mean, you can't get any more disrespectful. You can't get it. That's out the window in Jacksonville, Florida. There's not enough fish and enough spots to go around. That's why in Louisiana, they don't seem to care that much. I mentioned that on my blog, but I haven't mentioned it on YouTube. So, yeah, there's more videos like this just because it interests me. And I got some things I wanted to show you. So, all I can say is, thanks for your continued support. Check all the links in the video description, and I'll see you on the next one.